Good morning. Please turn your Bibles to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12. The Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I've heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up in the heavens so that there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people, who are called to my name, humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. for the church and for the church to pray for America. An old time preacher once said, pray? Has it come to that? Well friends, it has come to that. We live in a day this nation's founders could not have ever imagined. A day when principles like faith in a holy God and the conviction that his word should guide our lives are under attack. Not from without, but from within. In the name of liberty, it seems we tolerate everything. Everything but the truth. It's time for the people of God to call upon the name of our Heavenly Father and ask him to heal our nation. First Chronicles 16.8 says, Give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. The 
cost of freedom. God understands the cost of freedom. He loved us so much that he gave his own son that we could be truly free, not just from tyranny, but from the penalty of our sin. We must always remember, as we enjoy the freedom of our nation, that he is the author of true liberty. We now honor those who have stood and continue to stand <clears throat> before the tyranny of the world to keep us safe and free. As your branch of service is honored, please stand. United States Army.
past, we have lifted the lamp of liberty and invited the world to bask in the glow of our freedom. Now we face unseen enemies who would gladly give their lives to ensure that no one sees our light again. There are enemies within who would extinguish the light of God's freedom if they could. What will become of the land we love so much?
when he is acknowledged as our God, something the founders of this nation were very willing to do. God will not share his glory with another. He will not tolerate our tolerance of sin and our willingness to allow his name to be defamed. He is holy God, and until we bow in humility and repentance before him, we will not know his favor on our nation. We cannot, we must not have any other gods before him. It is not enough to simply acknowledge God's right to rule our lives. We must seek his will for our lives. With humility, repentance, and hearts of obedience, we must seek the face of God. Thank you. 
In Nehemiah, we read how God worked among his people to bring revival and renewal after a difficult season of darkness and despair. If we were honest, we would say that we live in a similar time. Why did God pour out his mercy and grace on those people in Nehemiah's day? Because they were desperate for his hand to be upon their nation. They cried out for his word. Ezra opened the word of God and when he did, the people stood.
Please pray with me. Oh God, would you open our eyes to our desperate need for you? May we, like the people of Nehemiah's day, cry out for your word. Would you raise up leaders from among us who will proclaim your word in power and without apology? And may we respond so that the world can see the depth of your mercy, so free and available to all. Jesus, your disciples asked you to teach them to pray. Lord, we ask you now, teach us to pray. Amen. kingdom to come to America? Should we pray not for our greatness, but for, for, for your glory? God, your victory in our lives, our future rests on your kingdom that has no end. Give us if we're unwilling to forgive each other.
So why would God answer our prayer and shine his face around us? Because we are his people. He promises to hear if we humble ourselves before him. He wants to revive his church in our land so we can bring glory to his name. And when God pours out his spirit on the church in America, God will be blessing America. In Hosea, the prophet writes, It is time to seek the Lord until he comes and sends righteousness on you like the rain. But if God rained his righteousness on America, how could we stand? Thank you. 
As we go forth, we pray, Lord, send your righteousness. Send us mercy. Send us grace. In a dry and barren land, our fields have turned to sand. Before you now, we stand. Lord, come and heal this land. Amen.